Hi, my name is Matt Zatmary, and I'm a video and coding engineer and programmer at MUX. I'd like to talk a little bit today about color spaces and how undefined behavior and inconsistencies in handling that behavior is affecting color representation in online. Sometimes the term color space is misused and used to describe a pixel in coding format, such as YUV, but that use is not specific enough to tell us how to convert that raw pixel values to another format, such as sRGB. The conversion is generally performed by multiplying each pixel value by a predefined conversion matrix, and a pre- or post-processing step may also be required depending on the pixel format, subsampling, and whether gamma correction must be performed. These matrices are defined as part of color standards. I have been using the values published in the book Digital Video in HD. Today I'll be focusing primarily on the BT601 and BT709 color space. BT601 is standard for SD content and BT709 is standard for high definition content. There is a standard called BT2020 for 4K content, but we won't be looking at that today. From a codex point of view, the color space is very simple. It's just a few bits of information encoded into a video header. In H.264, it's recorded in something called the VUI, or Video Usability Information, which is located inside the sequence parameter set. Other than simply storing this value, the codec does not need to take it into account. In H.264, the VUI is even optional, and even if the values are included, the defaults are undefined. When rendering the content, however, the encoded color space must be known in order to convert to the attached display's color space. The playback engine needs to know what matrix to load and whether gamma correction is necessary, or the colors might be rendered incorrectly. Since the default is undefined, I wanted to understand how different players handle this. I'm going to use this ffmpeg command to generate a test file. I'm going to take raw bytes from this dev0 virtual file and interpret them as raw video with a pixel size of 320 by 240 and a pixel format of YUV420 planar. I'm going to encode that into H264 using libx264 in a baseline profile and an aggressive quality of CRF18 and a placebo preset. I'm using a very high quality encode because I don't want anything to be distorted. I'm setting the color range to PC because dev0 is going to give me numbers in the range of 0 to 255. We should really be repeating this experiment with a color range of TV with pixel values in the range of 16 to 235, but let's just start here and see where we get. And then I'm going to create a file named 601.mp4. So I'm going to run this command, and we'll get our 601.mp4 file back out. I want to confirm that nothing got distorted as part of the encoding process. So I'm going to run ffmpeg again on this command. I'm going to use 601 as the input. I'm going to set the output to raw video. I'm going to write that to standard out. And then I'm going to send that to XXD, which is a basic hex display. Now when I run this command, you'll see that all the pixel values are zero. I've also pre-created this index.html file. This is a simple HTML file that we're going to use to render the video in the browser. It's a simple video tag that we're going to use um, to play the 601 to MP4. What's special in this file, though, is this little bit of JavaScript, which we're going to use the canvas to extract a pixel and get its RGB value. This will let us to do a numeric compare instead of just having to look at the colors. So if I switch over to Safari and hit refresh, this is the file we just generated. We'll see that there's a red of 0, a blue of 0, and a green of 135. This looks pretty good. I knew we'd get a green color back out. I didn't know what these RGB values would be. I still don't really know much about how the browser is choosing to render this video. To figure that out, I'm going to create a second video to compare it to. I'm going to go back to my notes. This time, I'm going to add in this color space data. Now, these new flags will not be interpreted at all by the video encoder. What will happen is these values will be sent to x264, and this will set certain bits inside of the file header that the player can then use to know about the color characteristics of the file during playback. Change the file name so we can keep the old file around. I'm going to run this file, this command, so we get the new file. I can look at the raw pixel values and confirm that they're all still all zeros. And we can come back to our HTML 
and add it in. Now when I render this in Safari, that was a mistake. I need to add the file. Now when I render this in Safari, we'll see we're getting the same RGB values back out. So this is strong evidence that Safari is using the 601 color space to render video in absence of color space. Let's see if we can get some more evidence towards that, however. I'm going to come back here to my notes. I'm going to take this color space back out. And we're going to generate a file in the 709 color space. To do that, however, since it actually is different pixel values to convert between 709 and 601, 000 in 601 will not equal 000 in 709, we're going to use a video filter to do this conversion for us. The video filter is called color space. I have to set the input range since it's unknown. So that will be PC. I then have to set the output range, which will also be PC. I have to set the color space, color primaries, and transfer characteristics, but there's a shortcut, which is the word all. And I can set that to 17 or 0M which is what we've been using dev0 to generate. And then I can set the output value to BT709. Now if I generate this command, or run this command, I'll get my new 709 file. Now if I pipe this through XXD, you will see that it's not 0, 0, 0 anymore. These are new pixel values that the color range filter converted from 601 to 709 for us. Let's add this to our HTML. Switch to our browser, refresh. And we are getting a different color back out with a red of 8 and a green of 157. So 709 without VUI data is rendering incorrectly. So this is more evidence that Safari is in fact using the 601 color space. But let's prove that beyond a reasonable doubt by adding our color space back in. 709 and generating one more file. Again, we can. I made a mistake there and overwrote the old file. So let me just recreate the old file again. then recreate the new file. And I can dump these pixel data and should be the same values back up. Add this to our HTML. Save that, back to Safari, refresh, and there we are. So this time we're getting a green value of 132 with the red and blue of zero. It's not exactly the 135 from before, but it is much closer. Since the color gamut and color gamma of the two color spaces are different, the conversion can't be exactly the same since they're both 24-bit color, meaning one val some values have to map to multiple values. So it is a lossy conversion, so I'm gonna call this good. So we've basically at this point proven that Safari will in fact render video without a VUI in 601. But what about other browsers? Let's check Chrome. I'm gonna take this, paste that in, 
and see what we get. This looks the same. Um, it's slightly different values, but very, very close. However, I happen to know from experience that Chrome provides different values depending on what decoder you're using. So I'm going to flip over to the settings and turn off Hardware Accelerator. That requires to relaunch. Chrome is now running without Hardware Acceleration enabled, and then I'm going to refresh this page. And what we're going to find here is that the two 601s look the same, and the two 709s look the same, which means that without Hardware Acceleration on, Chrome is ignoring the VUI whether it's present or not. Okay, let's try Firefox. Okay, I can see immediately that Firefox is rendering the 709 and the 709 VUI exactly the same. This means that without VUI data, Firefox is choosing to default to the 709 color space. I can confirm this by looking at the 601. This rendering is this very dark green color. This is because the values are being darkened by rendering the 601 pixel data as if it was in the 709 color space. We can confirm that the VUI is being interpreted correctly by looking at the 601 VUI that has the correct color. So what we have identified is that it's impossible to render colors correctly across all major browsers unless the file we started with has the color metadata correctly set and that metadata was not lost at any step in the process. We've also identified that FFmpeg has a tendency to throw that data away unless it's specifically included in the command line during processing. I want to demonstrate the severity of this issue. If I take one of my test files, I'm going to use the 709 VUI test file and probe it. We will see that on the output here that this is the YUVJ420P. The J just means full color. That's a deprecated setting that hasn't been deprecated everywhere. Um, in this case, the J and the PC mean the same thing. But we are showing that the color space is BT709. If I take FFmpeg on the same file, And I'm going to use just FFmpeg's default parameters to re-encode it to out.mp4. Now I'm going to probe this file, and the color space is now missing. A basic transcode lost the color space. Even if I set a video filter here I'm going to take the 601 with the VUI convert it to 709 so FFmpeg knows the input VUI twice. I'm also specifically specify, specifying the output. Run that command. Still no color space. Unless you specifically put it in the command line. During the intro I stated that the BT601 color space was standardized for standard definition content and the BT709 color space was standardized for HD content. Well, I'd like to try this experiment again using HD resolution content and see if the browsers still make the same default choices. In the interest of time, I've pre-generated the files using the commands you see on the screen now, and I've pre-generated the HTML file. Now, if we bring back up the browsers, we can see that the color values themselves do not change based on resolution. However, we've been missing one important browser during this entire experiment, which is Edge, of course. So let's see what happens over on Windows. Edge at the top is rendering everything in the 601 color space, regardless if the VUI is present or not. Chrome in the middle, with hardware acceleration enabled, is rendering everything in the correct color space when the color space is present. When the color space is not present, it's rendering SD content in 601 and HD content in 709. This behavior, while not observed anywhere else, does have a certain amount of logic to it. 
At the bottom, we have Firefox split into two windows because for some reason Firefox would not let me render eight videos in Canvas, so I had to split it into two windows. But the results are not surprising, and Firefox renders the same as it does on Mac. So what are the takeaways from this? First off, if you're using FFmpeg as part of your process, make sure you set your color spaces manually because FFmpeg is not going to do it for you. Next, if you're receiving a video that does not have a color space set, we can either ignore that and pass it through unset, or it might be better to actually set it as 601. At least the results will render consistently across the browsers. And setting it as 709 seems to make the, the video much darker, which I think is worse. <clears throat> Next, the industry should collaborate on best practices on how to handle videos where the color space is unknown. We might not generate the best color, but at least we can be consistent. And finally, it would be great if FFmpeg could automatically handle the color space values. I know this is easier said than done. The video filter stuff can be extremely complex, and the color space must be known at the beginning while initializing the encoder. So there's a lot of work to get that done. Thanks everyone for joining me here tonight, and I hope to see you all at a future meetup.